Today's China threatens the world because it is not the real China. Communism is not China. The real China is one of Confucian democracy with five thousand years of culture and history. In this video, I will tell you the truth, and you will catch two key words throughout: harmony and unity. They will help you to understand Chinese civilization and the real China. Compared to the Westerners whose traditions say they come from Adam and Eve, the Chinese nation comes from two men, Yan and Huang, who were the heads of two tribes. According to Chinese mythology dating to 2500 BC, Huang defeated Yan in a final battle for the first crown of China. But the victorious Huang didn't kill the loser, nor did he deprive Yan of his name. Instead, Yan was used as the joint name for the new community formed from the two tribes, Yan and Huang. In Chinese, is called Yan Huang Bulo. Their alliance was further consolidated in another battle, where they defeated the barbarian Chiyou tribe. After the war, the two tribes worked together to contribute their own expertise to the new community. The Yan tribe specialized in developing agricultural technology, whereas the Huang tribe focused on improving medicine and other technologies. So, the Chinese nation was born from political and social unity, which went on to become a very important tradition for the Chinese people. Unity not only means harmony within the community, but also represents resistance against hostility in the name of peace. While today's Chinese call themselves the descendants of Yan and Huang, it means the descendants of harmony and peace. Peace is a fundamental tradition of Chinese nation. It is based on harmony and unity. In its long history, peace was the rule. Well, war was the exception. This is similar to that of the European continent after the establishment of the European Union. Their motto, "United in Diversity," reminds Chinese their tradition, united in harmony. Harmony is the premise of unity, and unity is the guarantee of harmony. Alexander Hamilton expressed a similar idea in Chapter Six of the Federalist Papers. Which was published in the Independent Journal on November fourteen, seventeen eighty-seven, and read, to look for a continuation of harmony between a number of independent, unconnected sovereignties in the same neighborhood, would be to disregard the uniform course of human events, and to set at defiance the accumulated experience of ages, and further claimed that. Laboring nations are naturally enemies of each other unless their common weakness forces them to league in a confederate republic. All mankind will be united under the same wisdom, regardless whether they are Americans, Europeans, or Chinese. Harmony and unity have long been part of lifestyle of Chinese people. It gave rise to a distinctive feature of Confucian democracy: the unity of scholars and politicians. In Chinese tradition, almost all great politicians were great scholars. Confucius is a good example of this. At the age of twenty, he started his political career and became prime minister at the age of fifty-one. Throughout his life, he worked as a politician and teacher. Similarly, the eight great prose masters of Tang and Song dynasties were not only the most accomplished men writers of their time, but also outstanding politicians. Among them, Wang Anshi once served as prime minister and director of the National Reform Office of Imperial Song, and Ouyang Shou was vice prime minister and vice defense minister. Han Yu served as the Vice Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Vice Minister of Education in Imperial Tang. In the West, political theory and practice are usually separated. However, we can find similarities to this tradition during the Golden Age of Western democratization. For example, the Seven Sages of Greece were both scholars and politicians. The poet Solon was a statesman, an archon of Athens. In England, the father of liberalism, John Locke, was both a politician and a scholar. 
the philosophical founder of conservatism, Edmund Burke, but also a statesman in the Whig Party. In France, author of Democracy in America, Alexis de Tocqueville, once served as Minister of Foreign Affairs. The great writer Victor Hugo was a liberal and served both as a representative and as a senator. In the United States, President Thomas Jefferson once was the president of the American Philosophical Society and also founded the University of Virginia. President James Madison wrote part of the Federalist Papers and was hailed as the father of the Constitution. President Woodrow Wilson was the president of Princeton University, and he delivered the fourteen points of peace. These examples all tell us one thing: the unity of scholars and politicians favors democracy. To guarantee democracy, there is nothing more important than education, in accordance with Confucius' educational principle that all human beings are born equal in educational rights. Without distinction of any kind, such as race, social origin, or other status, everyone could be educated to be a sage to govern the country. Confucian democracy runs on Kuju system, which was a civil service examination system used in Imperial China for selecting candidates for the state bureaucracy. Even the son of a farmer might become the prime minister of China under Kuju system. As the Chinese saying goes. We don't ask heroes or raging as long as he's excellent. Unity between the rulers and the root is a fundamental principle of Confucian democracy. There was no strictly hereditary aristocracy or ruling class, which was in contrast to contemporary Europe, where generally a farmer didn't have a right to study, not to mention to be a statesman. Confucian democracy favors harmony between parties for their cooperation. It supplies a solution to the Western partisan political polarization. Confucian democracy encourages thoughtful scholars to cooperate with others and participate in the political process for the public good, instead of stimulating partisan rivalry or even partisan hostility to preserve the status of their party. Confucius indicated. The oldest man is sociable but not partisan. Similarly, President George Washington said, "I was no party man myself, and the first wish on my heart was, if parties did exist, to reconcile them." Also, Ralph Emerson stated in his lecture, "The Conservative," on December ninth, eighteen forty-one, that in a true society, both the party of conservatism and that of innovation, which divided the state, should combine. President Barack Obama similarly addressed the Democratic National Convention 2004. There is not a liberal America and a conservative America. There is the United States of America. There is not a black America and a white America and Latino America and Asian America. There's the United States of America. Wisdom has no borders, and neither do democracy and liberty. John Stuart Mill stated in the book on liberty, "The only freedom which deserves the name is that of pursuing our own good in our own way, so long as we do not attempt to deprive others of theirs or impede their efforts to obtain it." Two thousand and five hundred years ago, Confucius explained liberty in a Chinese way: "Do not impose on others what you would not have others do to you." This is a core value that Chinese people follow in their personal lives. In fact, the traditional Chinese applied this principle in foreign affairs as well. That is the unity of personal and state moral pursuit. It means a country must cultivate itself to set a good example of peace for others. This is the fundamental principle of Confucian diplomacy, which China has followed for thousands of years. It made ancient China the most moral country in the world. Throughout all of history, Confucian China meant peace, hope, prosperity, and harmony. But nowadays, communist China is betraying all its traditional values. Only if communism goes, will China remain. We, 
The Chinese political reform team are devoted to restoring a humanistic, democratic China and to bringing the world perpetual peace for all mankind. Subscribe to our channel, China's Political Reform, to support our actions.